Hey guys, what's going on? Today we're going to be working on the 240 again. It's been a while since you've seen it. Uh, you might not even be able to see it right now because Tony did such a good job of polishing it. It's super black and I can't even see it by looking at the camera. But it is behind me. And with some help from Siki, we're going to be installing Siki's Clutch Master upgrade kit for the 240. This is a Willwood Clutch Master with their Siki Green braided clutch line and an adapter bracket. This will easily bolt the new Clutch Master to the car without any modification. Should be a pretty straightforward install and it will eliminate the death box or the clutch damper in the 240. So if you're having troubles with that, this will bypass it without a problem and make your clutch feel a whole lot better. So let's get to it. See, I told you it was here. It was just super black and hard to see, but the car is here. First thing we're gonna do is put this up in the air and drain the fluid out of the Clutch Master just to make it a little bit cleaner when we gotta take everything apart. All right, here's the bleeder. We're just gonna crack that loose with an eight millimeter line wrench and hopefully drain most or all the fluid out to make it a little cleaner when we disconnect the master. Piece of hose on the bleeder and Tony's gonna step on that there clutch pedal and it should come right out. That should be good. All right, so this next part's gonna be pretty much impossible to show you. Tony right now is inside the car underneath the steering wheel trying to disconnect the fork on the rod of the master cylinder from the clutch pedal. It's just a cotter pin that you have to pull off, right? Just a cotter pin? Yeah. For some kind of clip? Yeah, just dis... Yeah, so you just pull the pin out, disconnect it from the pedal, and then we're gonna get to working on the master cylinder in the engine bay. But fortunately, I can't really show you under the dash. Now that the fork on the rod of the master cylinder is disconnected from the pedal, we're gonna remove this hard line with a 10 millimeter flare wrench. You can use a 10 millimeter wrench for this, but it's very possible that you'll strip the fitting. So the best practice is to definitely use a line wrench. And we're probably gonna lose a little bit of fluid with removing this fitting, but a couple rags and some brake parts cleaner should take care of that. Okay. Oh yeah. Disconnect the clips holding the clutch line on and then uh, you should be able to remove it. You're gonna have to go. Might have to cut it. Now it's just down below. Um, what you're gonna need to do this with all the other stuff in place is an intermediary sized ratchet and a 12 millimeter socket. You want a three inch extension for the top bolt on the left side and just the 12 millimeter uh, socket for the bottom one. So we'll just stick this guy in here, get it on, and then start breaking it free. Fucking polish this paper. And so uh, on this top one, a three inch extension makes it a lot easier to get back in there. Here she goes. Don't drop your nut. Definitely don't lose your nut. Your nut. And then when you're ready, just work this guy out. Ta-da! Okay, so we have our factory master sonar out, which actually has zero miles. Tony literally replaced this uh, this year video. in another video. Uh, there's zero miles on it, but we're glad to be installing the Siki unit. Um, and the way this works is you have to remove the rod from your factory unit over to your Willwood one uh, because of the fork and everything and for alignment. So all we have to do is pull this boot off and we will mess with the C-clip in here and pop it off. And same thing with this one. All right, just pinch the snap ring, and it comes right out. Pop the boot off the OEM one, and this one is not a C-clip. See if we can get this C-clip on here. Okay, once you get your C-clip in there and it's nice and secure, um, we're going to remove the fork from the OEM rod. We're gonna count the turns that it comes off to make sure it goes in the same amount, but we're gonna swap for the Willwood boot. We're not gonna stay with the OEM boot on this. Yep. Just crack the, crack the jam nut loose with a 12, and then count the turns on the fork. 
16. 16 turns. It's funny, that's what I remember being before as well. Oh, get it on there, get it on there, get it on there, get it on there. It's hard with this. Get the rubber on. Slide, slide the rubber the rest of the way on for me. Alright, now reinstall the fork with 16 turns, or however many you counted on your car. Five, six, seven. And then tighten the lock nut to jam it in place. Okay, we're ready to assemble the master cylinder into the Siki adapter bracket. Line it up just like that. Fits in there nicely, and we're gonna secure the master cylinder to the billet piece with the provided bolts. Then we'll attach the whole assembly to the car with the OEM nuts. And when you install this, you're gonna want Siki to be on the left side of the master cylinder if you're looking at the firewall. Tighten the bolts with a 13 millimeter wrench. And now we're ready to bench bleed this. What is bench bleeding? Bench bleeding is bleeding the master cylinder before you install it into the car. There's a couple of different opinions on how you should bench bleed the master cylinder. What we're going to do is remove the banjo bolt from the master cylinder. Then we're gonna fill it with fluid and hold our thumb over the hole and then pump it a couple times. But fluid is probably gonna spray out of here. So we're gonna do it inside this bag to contain it, make less of a mess. We should only have to do this a couple times and that should get all or most of the air out. We're using modal 5.1 for this. The best fluid out there probably on the market, at least for the consumers. So a couple drops of fluid came out, but now that my thumb is over it, it's creating a check valve on there. So when I pull this back, air won't go in. I'll do it again. It hurts. Ow, it hurts. It's tight. It's good and tight. We'll do it a third time for good luck. Get some more padding right here. Oh yeah. Okay. Just to contain the mess a little bit more, we installed the Siki line onto the master cylinder. Now we're gonna put this into the car. This isn't fully tight just yet. Well, thank you. No problem. And this gets installed into the firewall just like uh, the OEM one. You got your gun? Yep, right onto the studs with the factory nuts. Might be able to follow just the same path as the factory line. Now we're just going to run the line down towards the slave cylinder, and this will bypass the factory clutch damper. If you have one. If you have one. Go under the line again. I'm just going to pull it all the way for right okay. now. Okay, go ahead. And then down. Ready. So the first thing you're going to do is just grab a tool and pull off this, uh, this uh, it's a brake line clip or a clutch line clip or a hydraulic line clip. And then you're going to want to disconnect the hard line from down here and uh, cut any zip ties that are currently attached to that hard line. Now, if you, uh, if you had an automatic 240 that was switched over to a 5-speed, if you had a swap, you won't have to worry about this. So I'm going to have already bent this line like you see it here. But if you had a 5-speed 240 that was then converted to an SR, or if you're doing this on a KA, um, you'll have a box right here where these two screw holes are that are right off camera. That is a uh, devil box or a, a dampener box. It makes the pedal feel softer. Um, someone deleted that on my vehicle, which means they saved us some work. So all we have to do is disconnect this hard line and then pull it out, cut it off, whatever you gotta do at that point to get it undone. I also think this might be a problem because this line looks like someone's rounded it right off. All right, so usually I wouldn't condone cutting a line, especially a hard line off of a vehicle, but this was already pretty rounded as you can see. There's nothing, uh, there's nothing left of that to grab onto with a line wrench. So uh, we're pulling the hard line anyways. Um, so it was easier just to cut that than to try to deal with it. So now we need to get a, I think that's a 13 or a 14 off of actually what is a uh, Nismo. Um, that's the Nismo slave cylinder. So uh, this had an aftermarket clutch line on it. 
and we're just gonna break that free with whatever size yours is. Mine's a 15. And then we can spin this off the... Mike, can you grab a towel? Grab your sicky line and install. Now you got some extra line to work with, which is great. It's nice that you have some extra line. It's always good to have more than what you need and have not enough. But you're gonna to wanna to find a place to zip tie that up and out of the way. All right, so Mike grabbed me an 11 open and I was able to grab this. Ideally, you'd wanna use a line wrench, but that's nice and tight. And then we're gonna just uh, get busy bleeding or get busy dying. Uh, which do you think is going to happen first? Bleeding. Bleeding, then dying. Yeah. Boom. Okay, now we're going to tighten up the banjo bolt on the master cylinder with a 15 millimeter wrench. Removing the cap will make it slightly easier for you. Now you don't want to get these super tight because banjo bolts can break pretty easily. You definitely want to make it snug. All right guys, so we uh, reconnected the uh, master cylinder to the pedal, put the pin in, and put the cotter through the pin that actually connects the pedal to the master. We uh, went ahead and put some additional zip ties on this and uh, blood this system out. Feels really good under, uh, under no load. We'll get it out on the road here soon, uh, the whole car, and, and give it a shake down. I'm sure it'll feel great on the road. So uh, gotta clear some brake fluid off this line. It's just dripping from the bleeding. And uh, we are done. See you guys next time. All right, guys, there you go. We got the Siki Clutch Master Cylinder installed. Even though we had the rod at the same length as the factory one, we did have to adjust the fork on the clutch pedal. There was a little bit of slack in there, but we adjusted it and it's real good now. Install is probably going to take you like an hour, maybe an hour and a half to do this. I um, want to give a big thanks to Siki for this part. Um, this video wouldn't be possible without them. We'll have a link in the description down below for this kit if you want to get it for your 240. Once again, thanks to Siki, and we'll see you guys next time.